as a big fan of sci-fi as well as space sims such as Elite Dangerous, X4 appeared on my Steam homepage quite often and caught my eye on more than one occasion. And with their big 7.0 update recently coming out on June 20th, I was sent over a key to review the game. X4 Foundations, at its core, is a massive space sim sandbox with a fully simulated open world and real-time economy. This means that every single ship you see, station you dock at, and product you sell or purchase has all been created uniquely for your own specific universe. And there's factions scattered across the game, which you can build reputation with, that are in a constant battle to claim sectors. Anytime you pass a ship out in space, that is a completely unique NPC with its own place in the world. Whether that be a traitor or a pirate, and even if you're hundreds of thousands of kilometers away doing your own thing in a far-off sector, that NPC will constantly be simulated in the background to provide you with a living, breathing game world. The only factors that remain the same across saves are the sectors that comprise your universe and a handful of NPCs that serve as quest givers and faction representatives. Upon starting your game, you'll be given one of several options to serve as a starting point for your campaign with a ton more available if you choose to purchase the DLC. All these really do is start you off in a different role in the universe, where for example in one game, you may start as a Paranid warship pilot thrust into the middle of a civil war, and in another you'll just be a simple explorer. And if none of these interest you, you even have the option to create your own custom campaign, or just hop into the station builder and play Space Legos. On paper, this of course all sounds amazing, and I do want to give them massive credit for what they've accomplished, because there truly is no other space sim out there that achieves this level of quality and depth in regards to their economic simulation. But once you actually get into the game, you quickly realize that being a wandering space pirate bounty hunter who sells black market goods to aliens feels more like a pipe dream than a reality. My biggest complaint is that as a newcomer myself to the X series, this game just throws way too much information at you all at once. You'll need to learn so many little nuances in order to efficiently play the game, a handful of which I'll briefly explain throughout the course of this review. To put it simply, the steep learning curve present in X4 more often than not serves as a source of frustration rather than a sense of progression and encouragement. When it comes to actual gameplay, the questing system is incredibly lackluster and leaves a lot to be desired. Now obviously, the game isn't an RPG, and it doesn't market itself in such a way that you should expect these deep, interconnected quest lines with a huge emphasis on storytelling. And to be honest, shallow, generic quests are pretty par for the course for space sims, whether you like it or not. So I'm not complaining about the quality of quests, but rather how they're implemented. Most quests will have you complete extremely simple and repetitive tasks over and over again, such as killing a space pirate or hauling cargo to another station with increasing difficulty and increasing reward. My problem with their implementation comes in the form of how you receive and complete quests. When it comes to receiving generic quests that don't directly involve factions or a plotline, it's pretty much entirely RNG. You basically just fly through a sector on the map or scan some stations for data leaks and not only hope that you actually receive any quest at all, but you also have to pray to RNGesus that it's actually a quest you want. If you want to be a space bounty hunter, for example, you simply just have to hope that the sector you're passing through will offer you a mission to go murder somebody, but you might end up getting patrol or transport missions instead. There's absolutely no rhyme or reason when it comes to what quests appear where, and it's just such a baffling design choice for a game whose entire focus is being a sandbox, where you can do whatever the hell you want however the hell you want to do it. When you actually play it yourself, it feels a lot more like you're going to be whoever the game wants you to be at whatever random interval it decides. Not only this, but the way you accept quests is just so convoluted. It's insane to me that in a space sim with an entire universe of options, they couldn't find a more immersive way for the player to accept quests than to have them open their map and go to their quest log. I mean seriously, this is just a nitpick of mine, but how about you give us a quest board that we can check when landing at stations? Or better yet, how about you give me an actual reason to communicate with the goddamn extraterrestrial creatures scattered around the galaxy? It would be cool as shit if I was just cruising the stars and all of a sudden Glimbo from the 
in Macropinus System called me up on my intergalactic radio and was like, hey, if you like and subscribe to Slop Daddy underscore on YouTube, I'll give you 100,000 credits. That way, I could potentially learn more about the quest I was about to undertake through dialogue. I would also have a legitimate reason to talk to NPCs other than buying them into eternal slavery or asking for directions, and it would be far more immersive and engaging than simply just opening a menu and pressing a button. In terms of actually completing quests, more often than not the directions are just so freaking vague. They'll be like, hey, go acquire a station manager. Okay. How the hell am I supposed to do that exactly? Because I went to the manager's office at my nearest station and there was no station manager there for me to acquire. Or they'll tell you to go hunt down several enemies in this sector, but they don't give you a general area to search. I mean, am I supposed to use like telekinesis to pinpoint their exact location or what? When it comes to exploration, I rather enjoy this aspect of the game. Generally speaking, the extent of your travels will just lead you to stars and then some more stars, as admittedly this game doesn't have much to actually see, but there are some pretty interesting events that can occur. On more than one occasion, I was flanked by enemy ships or scanned by security for contraband. And thankfully, although space is pretty massive, albeit relatively small compared to my p****, you have several options to make your travels far more efficient. My favorite of these is by far the autopilot system which does exactly as you would expect it to do, unless you drive a Tesla in real life, in which case you may want to stick with manual piloting. Basically, you just press a button and autopilot takes you to your destination. What I really like about it though, is that they found a way to make it pretty balanced, so that you don't really feel punished for not using autopilot, but you're not rewarded for being a lazy piece of shit either. It's relatively slow compared to manual piloting, assuming that you actually know how to fly your ship, it will crash or even just get absolutely stunlocked on occasion, and it always stops you right before your objective, just so that you still have to actually play the game in order to commence in dogfighting, dock at stations, or complete patrols, for example. Alongside autopilot, you get highways, which simply give you a massive speed boost, and super highways, which are basically wormholes. You also get travel mode, which is just a slower speed boost, but is still much faster than your base speed, and gates, which act as teleporters between sectors. Exploration overall is really well done, and even pretty fun most of the time. If you want to take a break every now and then, there's a pretty nice variety of stations you can visit, each one equipped with a trading station and some clerical staff if you're of the chatty variety. My only real complaint, which is honestly more of a nitpick than anything, is that I wish we could explore planets. Even if it's just randomly generated like Starfield or No Man's Sky, I think it could be a cool feature that would only make the game better. In order to explore space, you'll need your very own spacefaring vessel, and there are over a hundred of them to choose from in the base game alone, ranging from small fighter ships made for culling disgusting Xeno filth, to absolutely gigantic carrier ships, all of which have a walkable interior. If pre-builds aren't your cup of tea, however, X4 offers a pretty in-depth ship customization system that allows you to mix and match parts as you see fit to create your ideal build. As for ship piloting itself, in general it feels pretty arcadey, but features the usual yaw, pitch, roll, and strafing, and moving your ship feels very snappy as opposed to a Newtonian physics-based system like what you would find in Elite Dangerous, which feels very floaty. Dogfighting is pretty run-of-the-mill, you have guns, a shield, and health. There really isn't much else to say about it. And finally, docking is a pretty fun little minigame where you have to perfectly line up your ship in order to safely land. In terms of generalities, the game is very jank in a few different ways. First off, animations are terrible. That's it, they're just bad. Second, voice acting is so awful to the point where not only does it make me question if it's all AI generated, but it also makes me wonder if they genuinely made it terrible on purpose. Hello. Sending you information now. Hello. Sending you information now. Hello. Sending you information now. The UI is a clunky mess of buttons just scattered and plastered everywhere on your monitor with no rhyme or reason, and it's like a dictionary threw up on your screen. 
Also, the performance is very jumpy, and oftentimes I would spike from 120 to 30 to 50, then back to 90, and so on and so forth. This is with a 6700 XT, 5600 X, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So although the game isn't graphically intense, the constant simulation aspect can cause performance issues more often than not. Overall, X4 has its fair share of flaws, but that doesn't make it a bad game. It's a space sim that caters to a very niche audience of gamers. And if you're willing to dedicate upwards of a dozen hours just to learn the game's mechanics, you'll find a really unique experience that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, goodbye.